Hello. Today, I want to speak, teach and preach on the topic of rest. Let's pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ, the Father, I ask you today to open the hearts of the people, Lord, that they may truly understand your word, O oh God. That they may truly understand what you have to say to them in the name of Jesus, and that you may help them, O oh Father, to become the best versions for them to walk this walk, to walk this line, the straight and narrow path, and for them to walk this path in peace and in truth and in rest. In Jesus' mighty holy name, amen and hallelujah, amen. Now we all know about peace, right? We all know about rest. Rest is when you relax, when you sleep. Peace is a is a point of tranquility, of calmness. You may picture peace as a dove. And peace is very relevant to you. It's very subjective. Like, for example, peace for someone, maybe you're lying on the bed and sleeping. Whereas peace for another person, maybe just sitting, listening to calm, peaceful music. And rest may be similar. Some people may mostly associate rest with sleeping. But some people show rest as sitting on the sofa, having a nice cup of coffee or tea. So many people... Rest and peace are subjective. But today, I want to show you the objective truth of peace today. And that is the peace through Christ. It says, it says in Matthew 5 verse 9, it says, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. So today, as Christians, we are called to be peacemakers. Because clearly, as Christians... We are children of God. We are children of God. We have been adopted into his family. Jesus died on the cross for us to be accepted into his family. He is that bridge that allows us to reconnect with God. You don't speak to a stranger like you speak to your family. You won't even, some people don't even speak to strangers at all. They only speak to their family. And it's the same with God in us. Before, God was not necessarily a stranger, but we were estranged from God. We had no way to communicate, no way to talk. But Jesus is that bridge that we're not able to talk to God. Day in, day out, any time. And he is listening. So today, so for us, we are children of God. Of course, a father and a mother or a carer is going to be able to hear and will always listen to their children. So for us, who God hears and listens to us. We are his children. Therefore, we must be peacemakers. It says in Psalms 23, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still, still waters. And he restores my soul. Today, when we have peace, for us to have peace, our soul needs to be restored. Our minds needs to be clean, to be cleansed. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. God has given us a sound mind. So for us to have that sound mind, for us to have that peace, we need a sound mind. And that sound mind comes through the acceptance, through the acknowledgement, and through the trust in Jesus Christ as our Lord and Saviour. Because think about it. I know many of you that listen to this channel are workers or people that are working. So imagine one day, or are independent adults. So imagine one day, someone, your, your, your family or your husband or your wife or anyone significant to you says, Here, I have paid everything for the rest of your life. You do not have to work, you don't have to pay for food, you don't have to pay for electricity, gas, whatever, no electric bills, your oil, your phones, any expense that you would ever need and want is covered. What would you do? You would sit down and relax for the rest of your life. Because everything that you're working for and working towards has been covered. Everything that you need and want has been covered. And it's there for, and the reason you do this, the reason you, know, you still don't go to work even after they said it, is because you trust them, that them will keep on their word. That they will pay all expenses for you. And it's the same with God. God has already said that grace, mercy, favor, love, peace, joy, 
goodness, faithfulness. All of these things are upon us. Miracles, heal, healings, even of raising of the dead. All of these things have been promised unto us, have been said unto us, have been given unto us. But you know why many Christians are not still stuck in circumstances? You know why many Christians are still stuck in troubled times? It's because of their lack of trust in the one who said these things. Jesus did say the road will not be easy. But he never said it's impossible. I'm not just saying that all your life may be always time, grace, mercy, favour, how walking in. But what the point I'm trying to get is it is that peace, that peace, the topic that we're talking about today, that peace only comes through the trust in Jesus' word, through the trust in God's word that he'll say that he will do what he says he will do. He's not a son of men that he should lie, nor a son of men that he should repent. If he said it in his word, in his word, he will do it. God will do it. He can, he can heal your mother that's in hospital. He can heal your grandpa. He can help you, heal you and heal your mind. All we need to do today is to trust in God. And that is where our peace lies. It doesn't lie in the antidepressants. It doesn't lie in the paracetamols. It doesn't lie within uh, meditation. It doesn't lie within video games. It doesn't lie within our phones. It doesn't lie within social media, Instagram, WhatsApp, Snapchat. TikTok, Facebook, Twitter. It don't lie in none of that. But all it lies in is in your trust for God's word. Many of us today, that connection, that trust is severed due to the fact of we look like Peter when he was walking on water, when Jesus on the boat, when Jesus said, come out, Peter. I'm paraphrasing here just to clarify. And then Peter stepped it was, also, it was a stormy night that night. The waves were raging. But at first, Peter was walking on water towards Jesus. And then, as he looked down, looked left, looked right, looked at the storm, the thunder shining down, the waves ripping up and down all around him, he started to sink because his faith had grew weak. His trust in what Jesus said and what Jesus would do started to wander. But not because, not because of anything that Jesus said, because he started to see the circumstance around him and the enemy loves to do that with us today because we're human we naturally fear our surroundings it's built into our into our dna we fear falling we fear heights we fear falling specifically because that is an inbuilt fear in our body for us to be able to survive it's inbuilt, God inbuilt in us for us to survive. Because imagine if we weren't scared of falling, we would jump off heights. And what would happen to us? Most of us would be splat. Non-graphic, of course. You know, you know how YouTube is. But how I'm saying here is that we have a tendency to look at our circumstances. We're very alert of our circumstances, mentally and physically, due to the factor of is that it aids our survival, it aids us as humans living on and reproducing for the next generation it helps us we're always why do you think whenever you look at whenever you're just sitting down sitting still and you see something fast moving on the floor and then you look everyone automatically looks something fast moving on the floor because it's grabbing your attention because it will aid your survival if you're in the wild and then or if you're just like chilling and something fast moving like a snake or a rat comes your body has to alert its attention towards them we are very aware of our surroundings because it aids us us as humans in our survival in our living in our daily lives and god has built that into us but because we are so aware of our surroundings some mentally and physically sometimes we cause ourselves to see here, see there, look left, look right, look at this place, look at that place, look at that circumstance, look at that circumstance. And then all we see is the storms and the waves raging left and right. And then what we don't see is God's promise and God's light at the end of the tunnel. So today, I want all of us to make a decision, to make a change from now on, for us to put our feet, to stand firmly and to stand in truth. And to put on, to put on the belt of truth and to keep ourselves girded, girded in God's word. 
And so Jesus died on the cross for you and I. It says in John 3, verse 16, it says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. And Jesus, he perished. But in that perishing and in that raising again, he gives us eternal life. And I remember earlier I was talking about that bridge to connect to God, to talk. We now have a hotline to God, a hotline. A hotline is a short telecommunications wire from one specific end to another for quicker communication than going through different ends. We have, like the US and China, have a hotline together, a sea cable that runs directly to the capitals of both nations. We too have a hotline straight to God, and that is the Holy Spirit. And when you accept Jesus as your Lord and Saviour, the Holy Spirit comes like a dove into your heart today. And if you'd like to receive the Holy Spirit, receive this gift, no paid charge at all. All paid. V-A-T free. <laughs> Amen and hallelujah. I'd like you to repeat this prayer after me. Say with me now. Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ, I repent of my sins. Lord Jesus, forgive me. And I receive you now as my Lord and my Saviour. From this day forward. In Jesus mighty holy name. Amen and hallelujah. Amen. You know one lost sheep that has now been found. The one lost coin that has now been found. Your name is written to the Lamb's book of life. Amen and hallelujah. Amen. You know one lost sheep that has now been found. The one lost coin. Oh yes I said that. But. What. Uh, now that you're born again. Now the Holy Spirit has entered your heart. There will be things that will try and come back. The enemy will try to use things to come back. To stir you. To tempt you. To hurt you. But I'm telling you today. Trust in God. Trust in the Holy Spirit. You'll know when it's the Holy Spirit. Don't shut him out. Because when you start to shut him out. He'll start. The voice will become less and less. Not because of his doing. But because of your hardening of your heart. If you train your voice. If you train your brain. To that you hear this voice all the time. And you stop listening to it. Then you will actually stop listening to it. Because your brain will filter it out. As just background noise. So today. Today, all of you today, all of those that got saved today, I want you all to just get a Bible. Get a Bible and get in a Bible-believing church. You may not know at first, but any the foundation that you need to build is so important. And any Christ, any teaching, preaching that you may ever hear, even this one, I want it, I want you to put it against the word of God. Put it against the word of God. Please do. Check everything I said, check the scriptures, check what I said. If it does not align with the word of God, then say, well then leave. If it doesn't align with the word of God. The word of God is the upright truth. God's word sent down from heaven to earth. And may you use it. And may you read it. May you understand. May God give you revelation after revelation. Use that word and stand on it. Not legit, stand on the Bible. Not literally. But stand on that word and what it has to say for any circumstance, any place, anything in your life. And when you do that, when you do that, then you will truly have peace. Thank you for listening and have a blessed week.